Welcome to Slayer Fest 98. I'm Ian Carlos Crawford. And I'm Alex Santos. And I'm Mike Patterson. And I'm Tom Lank. And you're listening to 105.9 Pow- <laughs> Power FM. Power Power Bottom FM. Power Top? Rude. It's a, it's a room full of sides. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here today to talk about Madam Webb. Oh, I was supposed to say that. You are. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I guess just like overall, um, all three of you had texted me about this, or Tom and Mike, you had texted me about this movie before I saw it. Alex, I saw you posting about it. And I'm, the three of you are what kind of pushed me into, all right, I should see this movie. It looks fucking dumb, but maybe I'll have fun. Um, Tom. Why, Tom is, why did you need, why did you need pushing? Because I didn't know that it would be fun bad. I thought it would just be like flat boring bad. Don't you see everything regardless? Don't you consume <laughs> the content that is being put forth just so you can talk about it? I don't know. With the Sony movies, like I only, I put Morbius on recently yeah, while did. I was cleaning and I was like, good God, this is so <laughs> bad. Like, I feel like all the Sony movies are good, bad. They're I, all like stupid, bad. I thought very, Morbius was just like boring. You know, Morbius, I saw I the first time I got COVID, I I decided to buy it on digital because I was like out of my mind. And um I That's really a good COVID it. brain movie though. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um it it is bad. You know what I like about the Sony movies is that like they are entertaining. They are bad, but like they're somewhat I don't know. It's like when there's a bad MCU movie by Disney, it's like it's just kind of like, uh, okay, like it right. all kind of looks the same. It all kind of sounds the same. Like, right. eh, all right, I didn't really love Quantum Manium, whatever. But like, I don't know. They take swings with the Sony movies, I think, um, that are interesting. I guess like what I'm a little disappointed in is that, Ian, you don't support vampires in STEM. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't support Jared Leto as a vampire in STEM. <laughs> I support uh, Matt Smith as a vampire. In STEM. Yeah. (laughs) Slightly in STEM. (laughs) STEM adjacent. Tom, did you see Morbius? No. Of course, yeah. (laughs) So, wait, I need to know, just like leaving the theater, uh, what were your thoughts on the movie? Tom, you go first. Wait, we start with the, don't we start with the very beginning? I I do like- You want us to start at the very end? I give me like a sentence or two how you felt and then we'll discuss like the things. My my reaction was uh, shock, dismay, glee, <laughs> such such joy. Also I've got to I've got to we have to get stoned and watch this at home. <laughs> Yes, uh, Alex. <laughs> I was thrilled in a dark way, <laughs> <laughs> in a sexy way. Uh, Mike, how about you? I mean, it was everything I wanted. It was everything I expected it to be, um, bad and good. Um, and I couldn't wait to see it again, which I have not <laughs> seen it since. But I've only seen it once. Um, but I can't wait to watch it again. Um, yeah, and I want to know who she voted for on Idol. That's that's like the lingering question I have. <laughs> the heavy well, she, handed she knew way. She was going to win. She knew who was going to win. That's the she, thing. I, I, or she knew who was going to win. And like her boss, who she let die, she didn't stop whoever won that season of Idol. She <laughs> she voted. She voted against. You well, guys, she can't control it. She 2003. <laughs> so. I guess well, I'll start with it takes place in 2003 and they they like heavy they like hammer it into your brain that it is to that when fucking toxic is playing which I love that scene the DJ goes like oh this is gonna be a big hit as if Britney Spears was like some unknown artist well but hold on okay so here so this was this was topic after our viewing amongst the gays Okay. So Britney's Toxic wasn't released as a single until 2004. In the Zone was released October, November of 2003. Like the album it's on was released in 2003. So we were debating the verbiage of that DJ's line. 
this is gonna be a big hit because it hasn't been released as a single yet. So I don't know. Oh my god! This is, this is how. Gay, this is why this movie was made for gays. By the way, though, <laughs> hire a gay person to watch the movie or but read I think the they script did first. Think, here's what i think i think there was a gay person in post that was like like no 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 no. we gotta adr this we have to we have to at least acknowledge that this is the one thing in this movie that doesn't make sense why is britney spears toxic playing on the radio one thing yeah, yeah. In 2003? <laughs> but like then we cut to the girls and they like already know it like i think sydney sweeney right. is like i love this song and it's like oh uh, didn't we say it just came out like the 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 things they did um I just, I did like, um, we got, uh, I know what you did last summer callback. I did love them cutting to Helen Shivers. So I did feel like this movie was written either by like a 95 year old gay man or like an eight year old gay boy. And like, Mike, you had texted me that if like you were a kid, you would have loved it. And oh yeah, if I were 10, this would have been like my favorite superhero movie. Yeah, I feel like you just described me with an 85 year old man or an eight year old boy. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I, li like, listen, I grew up with the Supergirl movie, which I always thought was, like, made especially for me, because nobody watched, nobody knew that movie existed, and I just loved Kelly Slater. Um, you know, the original Buffy movie, I unapologetically still love, but it's, like, what got me into everything, you know? Um, and, yeah, it's, like, these female-driven action movies, superhero movies, like, they're so few and far between because they are ultimately always like poorly done. So then like Hollywood never wants to do another one. Um, so they're all, they're all precious to me. And I, and I love them. I love Catwoman. Um, I love Wonder Woman 84. I know. I know. I know. I know. Oh, right. I mean, we did, we, no. we did argue about Wonder Woman 84. I forgot. <laughs> I know. It's I mean, fine. you guys, you are kind of stumped by the writing team, but remind like the writing team is the writing team that did Morbius. That mm. did Power Rangers and the Gods of Egypt. I don't even remember that movie. They're still employed. They keep getting jobs. So good for them. I hope they do Madam Web too. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm. Sh <laughs> it's like the rest of us are out here. We are pounding the pavement. <laughs> We're doing decent work. We're working hard. We're <laughs> Uh, and then just people are like, oh, you made a turd. Here's another chance. Here's another. Oh, that one was a turd. Here, here's an even bigger chance. More money. Great. It's just shocking. Failing upwards. Who is, um, did they just have some sort of deal at Sony? It must be that, right? Blackmail. <laughs> or that. Yeah. yeah. They know where the bodies are. <laughs> question was how how did morbi is it morbius or morpheus what's the one i use on my face when i go to korea <laughs> i have no idea what you're talking about don't know that morpheus? morpheus morbius is the vampire movie <laughs> i did shoot lasers at my face in south korea um how did it i don't know did yeah did it do well is it <laughs> was it like a big money maker was it that's the crazy part, right? None of yeah. them have done that well. No, well, and Morbius famously flopped and then started trending on Twitter. And Sony thought, oh, it's trending. We should re-release it. And they did. And then it flopped even harder. Um, How embarrassing. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean they yeah. re-released it? Yep. Yeah. They, they saw it was like doing well on social media or being talked about. It so was they trending. Thought... Yeah, yeah. But as a joke, nobody... Yeah. Ugh. You all remember the snakes on a plane shit when it was like, that was so viral and blah, blah. And then that like fucking flopped. I feel like no one learned the lesson from that movie of like, yeah, it can be viral because people think it looks stupid, but that does not convert into like box office numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Coke, when, when they're no, when like cocaine bear, can they, do they make big money on things that they think are going to be kind of, so so bad they're good etc but see like but, cocaine bear is i think like knew what it was these movies don't know what they are is the biggest they don't know crime. they're sharknado yeah like if you're you're making sharknado and you know what you're making like all right sure that's like more for me acceptable than like this is a movie and then it's dakota johnson flatly delivering every line and clearly hating being there <laughs>
But don't you think that Dakota Johnson knows? Like, yes, she knows. Yes. She knows that it's hot garbage is what she's saying. I, yeah. she, yes. she knew when, <laughs> when she, you know, in her, I'm sure you've all watched all of her social media, <laughs> all of her yes. interviews that she's done for this and her saying, oh, yes, the, the script changed drastically from, from what it was when I first signed on. And I, I can't even tell you about that. But she, by the time they were filming it, she was, she, you could tell that she is like, I'm contractually obligated <laughs> to finish this film. And I'm just here. Yep. I'm along for the ride. Uh, also in general, let me say, I do. I, it's not like she's bad in the movie. Like she's fun, no. sarcastic. <laughs> you just, you want to hang out with her. Yes. Her, she's doing like, she's doing like, she's a good actor um so and... i've never seen her in anything else and i was wondering like is she a bad actor or is this movie just this movie like no she's I think not she's great in the social network um personally wait who is she in that movie <laughs> she has one scene she's oh. she sleeps with uh she she wakes up with justin timberlake and he that's how he gets the idea to invest oh okay okay sorry i cut off tom go ahead <laughs> no please cut me off anytime i <laughs> she yeah yeah she's i mean i think she gives you like very naturalistic real it's believable un until in this movie it's not believable um <laughs> i'll just <gonna> say uh <laughs> i have to say though let me start at the beginning of why i wanted to see this was because of those posters that were like well someone did a drawing of dakota johnson and then they they airbrushed the drawing <laughs> With some spider shadow, some spider web shadow, like the, <laughs> the 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 uncanny valleyness of of the whole ad campaign was just shocking. They didn't tell I they didn't tell you what Madame Web. What there's out of context. Here you go. Here's Madame Web. Did a video about this. Like, <laughs> is this Kiss of the Spider Woman sequel? Like, there was no for for normies who didn't know this was coming out. I'm calling myself a normie for once. Um, <laughs> I, they needed to make clear that it was Marvel adjacent, uh, that it was sort of related to Spider. They, they just did. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, There's something started... like vaguely erotic thriller about yes <laughs> about the material, and you're yes. just like, okay, what <laughs> movie am I watching? What yeah. movie is this? And when that guy first kills everyone, it almost felt like a '90s like PG horror movie. Like I was like, oh, is that where we're going? I could get into that, but then we don't go into that. Oh, like well, the, 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 the crazy exposition lines that are being uttered by every single person. It's hard being here in the, in the forest searching for this spider. No, don't take my powerful spider. No, it's mine. It's just, it's just so, it's shocking. Also, it's insane that we start the movie with like watching her mom and then we flash back to that same exact scene and play it again. Like, but with, da but with Dakota Johnson in it, right? Like that's, right. sorry. I'm like, my my film nerd brain was like, <laughs> oh, like that's why that shot was Ooh. so wide before because they're intentionally going to put Dakota in later. Um, hats off to the filmmakers, bravo. Um, <laughs> So I didn't think she was good in this. Like I didn't, she, the, like the, what they were going for with Cassandra was someone that I would want to hang out with. What she was delivering to me was someone who's like stoned out of their mind, has no personality, is like, doesn't want to be anywhere she is. And like thinks it felt like Kristen Ritter like someone watched Kristen Ritter in Jessica Jones and Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23 and was like, let's do that, but worse and watered down. And it felt like that's what she was giving. Like, oh, here's a sarcastic line. Mm. So here's the thing about Dakota Johnson. And I think like there's a lot of people that compare her to Aubrey Plaza and they're like, oh, the delivery is very much the same. But like the thing about Dakota Johnson is that Aubrey Plaza's satire is what Dakota Johnson's real life is. Like, okay, that's right. fair. <laughs> that that is her resting state. Like this woman <laughs> is like galvanized by like generations of like nepotism and rich people and fame. And it's like if your grandma is Tippi Hedren and you're hanging out with tigers 
and your mom is Melanie Griffith and your dad is Don Johnson and your best friend in high school is Riley Keough, who is the granddaughter of Elvis. Like nothing <laughs> is going to fucking phase you. That and is- your and your stepfather is Antonio Banderas <laughs> and you're growing up on a, a ranch in Montana. Like she, I have you seen these, the, the story online of how she was at a blue bottle coffee shop and she said she demanded to make the coffee and they wouldn't let her make the coffee. So she exited the coffee shop, pulled a piece of rope out of her purse, <laughs> tied the doors shut and trapped the people inside and left. Like, why did she have, there's so many questions in that story that I'm like, every time someone's like, yes, she's like giving boredom. I'm like, but why did you, remember when she trapped the people in that coffee shop? Like, what are we gonna, I just them? love it so much. Yeah, she, I love that I want, too. I wish I grew up. She has, she has the confidence to, to do anything. She, <laughs> and I wish I had that. I think that's something you can only have when you, when you grow up <laughs> that There's rich. Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> tigers. And like, you have all the world, to, you have, you can fail in major ways and it, it will not. You can do Madam Web and be like, all right, that movie sucked, whatever. And like, doesn't yeah. matter, right? <laughs> like, That's the thing. She's already, will... yeah, she's already. Unfa- it will be unfazed her career. Uh, she's going to get nominations for this Sean Penn situation. Probably, maybe, I don't know. I, so, so, the, so we think that the, like, that was her like acting choice. Or like that's no, just like so. Have you not? You haven't seen other things that she's done. Mm-mm. She's just giving. I mean, in the way that modern naturalistic movie acting is typically, unless you're doing a wildly different character, you're just sort of presenting energetically a version of yourself. Of yourself. Okay. In the role, and that's her. Like that's her vibe. That's what she. Yeah, that's what she does. That's fair. Um, in like in Fifty Shades, she kind of does something similar. It's very like. There's like a sense of humor about it of like, okay, you want me to get into this whip thing? And it's just like makes the first one extremely kind of funny in a way that like you never ever got that idea from like all the coverage of the books and whatever. Like it's very like, oh, this is she's like, we all kind of know this is all a little bit silly, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> she she feels like she's in on the joke a little bit. All yeah. Right. That makes me like that makes me like her a little bit better because like I also will say, I know everyone's been like, her, and the interviews are funny, but like, she would be a nightmare interview for me. Like, I would hate to fucking interview her. Because like, I don't know. Like, when someone's like, Ugh, went viral and everyone's like, this isn't how you interview. Yeah, it is. That's how you fucking interview people. And like, she was an asshole about it because she knew that they were making fun of the line, but like, the movie's garbage. I don't know. Like, you expect people to be like, this is an Oscar-worthy line and that's why it goes viral. Here's what... I admire about her is that she is entertaining herself at all times. <laughs> she is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Including in in the, the the press junket because also you would go and you you slowly go insane. I'm assuming having it talk about the same yeah. thing over and over and and so you know I'm assuming mo- mo- each person that comes in wants to have a moment with you right. and mm-hmm. um so I do admire that. Also, I I do have to say that I will. Forgive her for anything for for being the one to um to expose Ellen. Yes. I do like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause even then, like that was clear she fucking hated Ellen. Like it was clear she did not like this person. She and had a mission. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, the 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 freedom to fail because no one else would ever she she's like fine if I don't get invited back to Ellen, who cares? Yeah. Right. <laughs> she doesn't need anything and i love that energy and i want to take it and make it my own um that is a nice position to be in where it's like fuck off ellen who cares what privilege (laughs) and yeah i also love how she simultaneously doesn't take anything seriously and takes everything seriously at the same time yes (laughs) yes Yes, high five to that. Because she's like not (laughs) laughing if like but she is clearly having fun but is also like deadpan seriously delivering everything and and mike i think it's kind of like what you said about like she's kind of doing aubrey plaza but not like aubrey plaza is doing it in a jerk off way and 
Dakota Johnson's doing it in that like um, Aubrey Plaza's doing her. Do you th do you think Aubrey Plaza came? Was that like um? Did she just decide I'm gonna do a character when as a young person in Hollywood and just and see if do that it forever catches on? Like, is she essentially like a what Bobcat Goldthwait used to be, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, where they're sort of doing this? What do you think? Maybe, I wonder, but I wonder I, about that too. Or is well, that I, also her just natural? She's just a sarcastic. Well, I don't know. I think on White Lotus, she showed like range, um, and I think She's like, like her range, yeah. <laughs> range. Her, I, I think like her career choices recently have shown that like she maybe. She maybe started her career doing exactly what you were describing, Tom, but now she's kind of like, oh, what if I like changed it up? Like, yeah. what if I put blue streaks in my hair for the Teen Vogue party? You know, like, <laughs> she, I think she's, I don't know. I like her. I've also been rewatching a lot of her movies recently. Um, like, I just rewatched Scott Pilgrim and she's one note in it, but she's delightful. She's, you know, mm -hmm. she's the character from Parks and Rec. Um, I say all this and like, she's so funny and I'm, I just, I'm fascinated at the, um, the science behind it all of like, did she, was it a conscious choice to sort of cut? Right. Because there's, especially on Parks and Rec, there was like no line between her and the character, right? Like right. every interview or every appearance, she was that character. So it felt like, can she act? But I do agree with you, Mike. We've seen more in her recent roles that she can like change it up. I will say I'm I'm also kind of hit or miss with Aubrey Plaza. I feel like I should she should be someone that I like adore. I love in Parks and Rec when she's like, my mom's Puerto Rican. That's why I'm so lively. And like I fully relate to that. Um but I don't know. Have you all seen that? There's a movie called like Life of Beth where she plays a zombie. Yes. I fucking Wait, you didn't hate like that, that movie. That movie's garbage. No, I just thought, okay, we're getting way off track. I'm so sorry. But no, she gives a great horror performance in that movie. No, 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 no. Edit that out. I, edit, how dare edit. you? I think <laughs> anyway. it's great. Okay. He's anyway, also sorry. good in Emily the Criminal. Yes. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, it, so came out, it came out on Netflix, I think, mm -hmm. like last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, can we get back to anyway, yeah. oh, people in Peru? Da <laughs> wait, wait, Dakota Johnson. Wait, can I say one last thing about Dakota Johnson? Yeah, yeah. Always. I think the thing I like about Dakota Johnson the most is that, like, she does something incredibly charming. And then she'll be like, and then if you go and you're like, oh my God, that was incredibly charming. She's like, you're fucking weird. Why would <laughs> yeah. you think that? And it's just like this naturally organic, charming, charismatic person that like finds you completely weird for her, finding her charming. And you're just like, I don't get, she's like, I don't get it. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean that I'm funny? What do you mean that like this? And it's just like, she would hate you a little bit for it, for finding her so charming. That what she was doing to that man who was like, Oh, it yeah. went viral. This line went viral. She's like, what do you mean? Yeah. But yeah. then she sort of like gaslights me while she's explaining. She's like, <laughs> that seems like a perfectly normal line to have. I will say, yeah. A movie. Yeah. I'm, like, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. And then she's, she's just like, is any sentence out of context, out of context? And you're like, yeah, absolutely. And then you're like, <laughs> what is purple? How do I, what? I'm like, I, is like, she high or am I high? Because like, I couldn't, I, because you're right, Tom, watching that interview, I was like, well, maybe she's right. Maybe that isn't that stupid. It's just out of context. But like, no, yeah, that is, is she, a stupid line. <laughs> she might be stoned in a lot of things that we're seeing. That's kind of fun. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she also hasn't seen the finished film. So she probably was like, what, what, what do you, what line are you talking? She probably about? also doesn't give a shit right that's also a thousand percent true yeah but also that is common right tom isn't that common for people not to see the movies they're in no most n nobody look at me do i, I don't want do you want to look at this face i don't want to look at do you want to hear the, how bad does this sound to you because it's even worse to me it sounds fine <laughs> in here in my head but then as soon as i listen to it i want to die mm. so um yeah there's something about we don't most people don't want to watch Except for but, now, I'm used to it because I have to edit all my stupid. It took me forever to get Tommy used to Lank my on Instagram yeah. and watch my dumb videos, because I now that I have to see it so much at it the face. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm used to it now. That's how I was when I first started doing this podcast. I'd be like, oh my god, I can't hear my fucking voice. God, this annoying voice. And then now I'm like, that's yeah, that's my annoying voice. Fucking whatever. Um, you do like get numb to it if you hate it, but then have to hear your voice all the time. Um. So I'm taking I'm taking an auto like a 
how to how to become an audible book narrator person. Ooh, you would be good at that, Tom. On Sunday, <laughs> uh, I'm just going because my friend's taking me with her, and I'm like, I I would not want to listen to this for for eight hours of a book. Can you imagine me, this? It's it's a grating sound. I just, but I'm gonna go. Um, sorry, I took, I we got I derailed myself. Like um, like ma like Madam Web at the baby shower. You made it all about you. <laughs> oh, my god, oh my god! Oh my god! The baby shower. Okay, can that we was go? improv'd, right? Like <laughs> that was fantastic. Why yeah, did you have, have to be at her friend's sister in law's baby shower? What was Emma Roberts doing there? Was she? <laughs> Did she know somebody? Was she? It seemed like it was a curse put on her. Like, yeah, she seemed slightly too big to be in that role. Did right. they all think, "Oh, this is going to be a big Marvel thing," and we're coming back? But they knew it's not. They know right. it's, it's they well. Know it's so funny. well, but so the thing about the rewrites is, I guess the movie was originally pitched as like Terminator, where she knows Emma Roberts is pregnant with Peter Parker. And all the spider women know that and they're protecting Emma Roberts. So I'm I'm fairly certain everybody signed on thinking like, oh, this is gonna be a big, big deal. Wait. Like uh, I like, like that why? plot better. Adam Scott. Adam Scott signing up movie? to be Uncle Yeah, Adam Scott signing Parker's up to be mom? Uncle Ben is like on paper, you're like, oh right, of course I'll be Uncle Ben, but then the script goes through all the revisions. Wait, and... you're blowing my mind. You're blowing yeah. my mind. I didn't yeah. know this. How did, what were the, what is her, did she, wait, okay, because he doesn't have a mom because he lives with. Right, his uncle aunt. and aunt, which is Adam Scott. Because well, they, they die, they, like Peter Parker's parents die. So he's always, we, we met him when he was just with Aunt May. And like, yeah, and like they allude to that in this movie, like Adam Scott's like, oh, I met this woman like so that's the other dumb. thing about this movie that drives me nuts but it's also really campy and iconic is like they they never refer to the baby as peter that's like a whole thing no, though they i was around. waiting like, oh do you know the baby's name like and let like, dummies like me know i had no idea like, <laughs> oh, Wait, did, you, did, did you just learn that right now yes i'm learning this all right now <laughs> also there's like foreshadowing and like really funny ham-fisted foreshadowing and like oh it, being an uncle you means you have no responsibilities of a parent or yes. it's like and then there's a part where she goes oh you've never been shot in queens before <laughs> <laughs> like she knows that this man is because tom get he shot. will get shot in queens later right. that's where he dies she lets him die she's a villain <laughs> she's also a queen i love her um so speaking of heavy-handed the the many shots where there's like Ooh, a spider web type shatter in the glass. Ooh, the lace pattern on this curtain reminds me of a spider web. It's uh -huh. so, it's good. So, like good. someone doing that, I can't decide if someone doing that is like a gay person being like, oh my God, like laughing while doing it or someone being like, this is genius. Like I can't it, tell which it me, was. It To me, it was really like corporate, Corporate attempts at, at art, uh, artistic, whatever, at being artistic. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you know I saying? agree with that. Um, I will say though, so having seen the Venom films and I haven't seen those <laughs> and Morbius, um, the reason I like watching those movies, and I've only seen them once, but I, but I, I it's like an anthropology. It's like, um, it's very straight. It's man like anthropology of the store. brain. Yes, it's like anthropology of the store, but um, but it's like. It's like a, a, it's a it's a view into straight men culture that is safe enough for me because <laughs> it's like you watch you watch these movies you watch Venom and Morbius and you're like oh this is what straight guys like oh interest <laughs> oh okay oh they like that like that joke is at Michelle Williams' expense because she's a woman interesting so like with that in mind. It's like Madam Web is the gay version of that, where yes, Ian, I do think a gay person was like, ha 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 ha, like, oh, this is so camp and clever, but like doing a note that a producer was like, oh, it's gotta be a spider web glass. You know what, does that make sense? Does that, in my brain, yes. that made sense. Sure, but yeah. I, okay, great, I do poppers. Um, I, but <laughs> I, so another thing about the movie with her character is, so no one really gets any powers. It's insane. It's uh -oh. maddening. 
Like, <laughs> Stand me up. I need you to know that I am mad about it. You the have the choice. It's a make... superhero movie. We get yeah. a, a woman-led superhero movie yep. about a spider person. A Peruvian and, like... immigrant, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. God. That is true. About the first a... Peruvian immigrant. A white woman. Superhero. A white, Lati a white Latina. A white Latinx person. <laughs> um, she... <laughs> God, call me out here, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> she, we're we're gonna we're gonna do, we're gonna give her a whole movie, and we're absolutely not gonna let her fly, spin a web, go from build. We're not gonna give her a cost. We're not gonna let her do anything. What extraordinary, extraordinary? Wait, 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 wait. She can hit of... people with cars. <laughs> she sure can. With Twice. stolen vehicles. She, she has a premonition that gives her the ability <laughs> to then get in moving vehicles and mow people down. And yeah, crash them can... perfectly into the villain and not kill anyone else around. Well, <laughs> she also has the power to get into a taxi cab, remove the license plates from it. Not the top, though, that has the ID on it still and drive around without the cops finding her. And drive also, to Peru. And the cops forget about them within like the whole movie takes place in 48 hours, maybe. And like, they're like, oh, this manhunt for this kidnapping. And then they all just don't. And her care. face is everywhere. We see it yeah. on the newspaper, <laughs> on the TV slides. But I'm allowed to fly internationally. Yeah. She knew, how to, so wait, she knew how to get around TSA. Yes. Ma'am, it's 2003. The internet does exist. It's not great yet but it's there. And she how wears the same outfit in Peru and then like comes back and it's like, how long was she gone? Like, also she I wears love the she same says, outfit to the hey, funeral. It's the hey, funeral girls, outfit. I'm going to be, I'm going to go into Peru. I'll be there for a week. Goodbye. <laughs> like, I love that she just knows exactly how long she'll be gone. It, well, that's oh the sight. That's the vision. So again, also, the with costume, wait, the costume. Sorry, we're going back. No, it's fine. Hopping all over in time, but the costume looks like it, her costume looks like she's about to walk into Ian's room right now. It's a red leather jacket. <laughs> it's like something. It's like reverse spike wear. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, you with the Buffy reference, you know Tom? It's I'm proud reverse, of you. It's the reverse SMG um, poster. Wasn't she wearing red? Leather pants and yeah, yeah. I, I, I can yeah. fully buy them being like, oh, this is like Buffy. Like I yeah, can we're gonna, absolutely. We're gonna reverse yeah. it. We're gonna put the red on top, red leather. Yeah, um, she wears that. That jacket would stink. She goes everywhere with it. Oh God, it's such an ugly jacket. I love. We'll we'll give her like an ugly 2003 jacket, but we're not gonna give her the chunky highlights or anything that we're. Oh, I would have loved that. <laughs> give her the fucking Gale Weathers from Scream Two. Because that's yeah. what she would look like if this, to be honest, if this were really 2003. So, um, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead Mike. No, uh, sec please, you. So, I was gonna <laughs> say, so basically, she has to. I love that because no one has powers other than her being able to see, which seems like 20 minutes into the future. Um, she basically has to home alone this very strong villain throughout the whole movie where it's like, <laughs> hee hee, I'm going to stand here. When you walk towards me, somebody's going to hit you on the head. And it's like an anvil collapses on his head. It's Or a car. Or a car. Yeah, it's so... We have this, this guy who seems to be bright, super strong, super powerful, is killing people left and right. But like they always evade him by like standing in the right spot. And it took me a while to realize the girls did not have powers. I thought we were assuming like... They didn't know they had the powers, but they were there. But no, that is not the case. Yeah, there was. It was homophobic of them to to show us flash forwards of the girls in their in their fun costumes and having powers, but not actually in the movie that you're watching. We'll put it on the poster. We're gonna put them in their costumes on the poster, but that's not actually anywhere really in the movie. Yeah, I would have watched that scene with the three of them like beating up that guy for the entire runtime of Madam Web. Um, and at, like, that is actually the scene where I was like, oh, as a little kid, I would have popped off for this because like, like that scene alone, I would have just rewound and like, yeah, I would have played along with it at home. That's so nerdy, um, but I like I would too. have done it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like with the Power Rangers movie when I was a kid, um, yeah. with the Spice World movie as a kid. Um, <laughs> but 
Yeah, it is a bummer they don't even get like they're not even potentials at the end where like like they get summoned or whatever and like Alex, what a how mad were you? I was fine with it. <laughs> they were <laughs> I mean, I got to see what they I got to see their little powers, their glowy stuff, and that was fine. I mean, I don't really need like Give me another Sydney Sweeney movie where she gets powers. That's yeah, like... but they're not going to. Well, they, that isn't just my mine. fault. I spent. <laughs> I I saw the movie twice. I you spent... saw it twice. Were I, I spent money for it once? Well, so... women's stories matter, and yeah. Alex is the only one that has supported. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also like the funniest part is that this villain is afraid of being thrown out of his high rise, and it's just like, why wouldn't you just move? <laughs> Move Let's to a ground talk- floor apartment. Let's like never get in a villain. Hike. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Yeah, the villain. So I went to see it with a straight friend, and I was thinking, I this is what I think of, which we'll get to Sydney Sweeney's acting in this movie or Hulk vibe. But my friend was like, So, like, is that dude a porn actor? Like he couldn't deliver his lines. It was the voiceover, right? And I was like, It was all ADR. Like all, all ADR. Of- but not just ADR. Now ADR can be used like when you know to yeah. to to change a line while the coverage is on the back of you yeah. or to re-record something that you didn't get clean sound on. This ADR, they re- they changed the lines. The, his mouth was moving to one set of lines. <laughs> yeah. And the re-recording that we're now watching is a completely different script. They And they do this throughout the movie yes. so poorly that they, they did this actor so dirty because yeah. it just makes him look like he's doing terrible acting. Yeah. And also he, his accent is very inconsistent. I can't tell. It's cartoony. He... Yeah. Well, so at, at first I was like, and I've never seen this actor in anything before. So I, I, I thought initially I was like, oh, maybe his accent is heavy and that's why they revoiced him. But then Tom, you're absolutely right. Like his lips do not match at all. We saw it on IMAX. And usually I'm like, I'm looking for that stuff because I work in post. And so like, but I try to turn my brain off, but I was like, holy shit like if i'm seeing like and looking around and people also were seeing it and i was just like oh wow this this is bad this is really really it's bad when and, we I, started and my heart laugh. went out yeah, yeah my heart went out to like the sound people and like kind of everybody that worked on this movie like i know we're making fun of it and all that but it's like this really all starts with the studio just being like yeah throw I'm a sure little spider on on this movie <laughs> and whatever like everybody's so defeated by the end they're like who cares if it's out of sync like you know (laughs) it's just wild that i'm like uh, this feels like something like the whole thing of this movie which going into it i kept thinking oh it's lit like riverdale but it seems like it's like a late 90s early 2000s like when those movies didn't want to admit they were superhero movies so like the x-men wear just black and like it felt very superhero movie that is like trying to be more but like if they had just went for it it probably would have been a better movie yeah it's almost like it adopted the like right ian like we're embarrassed this is a superhero movie so we're not gonna make it a superhero movie but it is a superhero movie right yeah well they tried to uh, they tried to change the film clearly from what was filmed to something different in post production and it makes me wonder like, oh, why wasn't this, why didn't they pull a Warner Brothers and and just shelve this and declare it a, yeah. a corporate loss? I, it, well, I, mean, I think thank it's God probably IP, right? Like, it's like you, mm. you throw these things out, you keep the IP going. Oh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. true. Because didn't Sony do that with that, like, really bad Fantastic Four movie? Isn't that why that came out? Yes. Yeah. Oh, or I forgot Fox. Yes. the history mm-hmm. of this, of that Spider-Man deal. I, wa- I listened to a whole podcast about it. They have you're right, so it has to keep going, otherwise they lose yeah. a license on Spider Man. Alex, I... you're so smart. <laughs> smart and handsome, Alex. Look at you. Oh, wow. <laughs> My favorite villain line though is like <laughs> imagine if you could see who was going to murder you. What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> the NSA officer that was at the opera who brought her badge to the opera and a gun was like, <laughs> oh no, am I going to see the man who murders me? And then she's like, you're poisoning me. Which I mean, like, okay, sure. Also, who was that actor? I just, right. so 
like what I'm so curious uh how she landed that role like it's such a thankless job to do <laughs> like clearly she's the bait oh my god um yeah <laughs> also, also wait I want to point out that it is also bananas that another famous person has a weird Zosha Meme as his like. Yes, I was just thinking of her. A Nepo person, baby, like, a, a fellow, a fellow Nepo, baby. Nepo baby. Okay, I didn't even. I her and Emma Roberts, I did not know were even in this movie. So when both of them were on screen, I was like, who? Like who? Like got tricked into getting? Like how did they get people that are good actors and like famous names to be in this movie? Yeah. I don't based on a character from the comic book. That's what I I don't know. I actually don't know a lot about the Madam Web character. Um, and it, but I I did know like the the Uncle Ben stuff. But I have no idea if Zosha was gonna be. It, was she supposed to be the villain in the next one? Like, and also if she is, can we please get that greenlit? Like right now. <laughs> also, she is just like the bitchy computer girl with screams. Yeah. <laughs> She never stands. I think Joel Kim Booster said, like, I'll say this for Madam Web, Zosha Mamet does not stand in that movie. <laughs> we all love a bit we all love a computer bitch with screens. Yes. I didn't even realize that, but yeah, she does not stand up once, does she? She's only I love the idea of her contract being like, I will not stand up. I'm only at this desk. <laughs> Guys, Wait, do you what think if... she got paid? Do you think that Zosha Mammoth's still at the computer screens? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually her house. They just set up around her and she's like, you can film in here, but I, I've got work to do. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, do you think she's like Madam Web's equal where like she's also going to be revealed as paralyzed or what? If she has a neuromuscular, but I don't have a neuromuscular disease. God, that line, that line reading was fantastic. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why she didn't stand. I I just, I, I feel like, Mike, the movie you said that it was supposed to be, that sounds like it would be, like, could be a good movie or, like, a fun, like, whatever. I mean, like, it's got to be movie? better than this one. Yeah. <laughs> Is this, I mean. Which I love, by the way. <laughs> you mentioned um, the Wonder Woman 1984 earlier. Mm -hmm. Is this sort of, like, what happens when, comic book movies are like no we're leaning into the fact that it's a comic book movie let's go back to that it doesn't have to be super this this doesn't have to be like the the batman movies that are just like so dark and you know what I'm saying? maybe like, yeah and which is probably why i i enjoy like i enjoyed this more than i, I i've never really rewatched the mcu movies except for maybe the first avengers um i'm not like i I think they're good, but like, they're all kind of just middle of the road for me. I like, listen, I love a bad movie. Um, I think there's something really artistic about bad movies. Um, Cause they really just like, they really go for it. And I, and I, I I'd rather that than just like, yep, yeah, this is, this is good. This is all paint by numbers. It's um, yeah. No, I, I get it. Like if you like, I think a lot of the times when you think about like art, you're like, I would rather you fail in an interesting, funny way Absolutely. than watching you just fail in a boring quantum mania eternals. <sighs> what was you the other what? what was the other shit ways? You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. Like, um, yeah. That, you're percent. so right. You're so right. Cause you know, now that I think about this, like I had so much more fun watching this than the quantum oh my god. Like, I mean <laughs> yeah. It, it also you know when everyone was trying to figure out like what's the meaning of camp like this movie is like put it in the dictionary camp. yes <laughs> yeah. like and it's just unintentional i don't it's just so so before we cap off talking about uh dakota johnson's character uh we have to talk about her end because it is so stupid <laughs> even even the fact that she's blown off that ledge and then something hits her in the, like, why didn't she get blown off the edge? And that's why she's blind. That's a bigger action piece than like she's underwater and gets hit by a firework that's underwater. Well, to be fair, she got maimed by the Pepsi Cola sign. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Can we talk about Pepsi in this movie? Yes. The like product placement was so silly. <laughs> Murdered by Pepsi. I it it <laughs> well to be wait wait technically it was a firework it was a ricochet, firework ricocheting off the pepsi cola sign 
Which we saw the first time she saw her visions. We saw the fucking letter. And I was like, But didn't the letter S brought you by the letter S? Didn't that murder him, the bad guy? I think the letter P. Yeah. Somebody also tweeted about this that it was like, there's so many visions to like the letter S. And then like, she's like looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. And then like the letter P kills him. And then I think S blinds her. No, Um, she gets hit by a firework underwater. She gets knocked out. And then. When she's going like this, you hear the boop, and she goes, oh, and then she But isn't it because the S is floating under, well, Alex, you saw this twice. You tell us. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was a firework that ricocheted off the Pepsi sign. The yeah. Assets okay. Or something. But okay. um, also, if you watch this movie again, which I highly encourage everyone to do. Will do. Dakota Johnson is really bad at opening Pepsi cans. <laughs> what? <laughs> Madam Webb, what what can she do? (laughs) The first, the first scene, she's trying to open a Pepsi can while she's talking to, while she's like talking to that little kid that gives her the sign, and she just like cannot open this can. And then the second scene, when they're at the uh, barbecue at the at the uh, baby shower, she tries opening a uh, opening a Pepsi because they're just like you can't drink because you had a heart attack, and then she can't open up the can. So there's a lot of, like you mentioned, Mike, a lot of things she can't do in this movie because think of, we spend so much time of this movie with her just not believing that she's seeing the future even though she is consistently seeing the future. And if she just was like, okay, that's what I'm doing. She could have saved a couple more people's lives rather than these three girls over and over and over again. Well, she doesn't her even boss. like being- an Yes. Audience. She doesn't even like being a first responder. No. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's my question. If you can see the future and then you do something to change it, then you didn't see the future. So what is she, she only seeing things that definitely happen? Like what's the- it's like this. What's the space and time rule here? I feel like with superhero shit, they play fast and loose with that, but it usually is like, this is what will happen unless you do something. Well, and I think too, the key thing that brings this all together that they've taken out is that she is, she knows who Peter Parker is supposed to be, right? And like, if that's why she has the powers, because she's supposed to protect him and make sure he is born right but you take all that out and then it's like why does she have what why 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 to every to everything you know so annoying to give her powers that aren't even about for to to be to be be about her it's facilitating someone else i'm angry i think she's like the like i didn't know that spiders can see the future (laughs) yeah like what the fuck does that have to do with isn't that what the spider sense is so listen i wrote the original draft you guys and um I think what when it you is, were 10. Is, yes, I think. OK, I because I have thought about this movie a lot. Um, and it, I think it's supposed to be sort of like adjacent to the spider sense that Peter has, because yeah. that in a way is seeing the future. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> also, I love that she knows that there's this whole like super easy way to become a spider person is just to go to the per- Peruvian Amazonian forest and go to the spider people that exist there. Las yeah, Serranias. Like, oh my I got every time she said that word. Oh my god. <laughs> but she's like <laughs> I got to I got to do all this so that Peter Parker can get bit by a radioactive spider. Is it the same spiders from from I think it's Amazon, supposed to be cuz different. Well, here's what also gets conf- cuz I think this is the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, right? So no, like I read that like they wanted it to be Toby Maguire's universe which it should have been that would have made sense right but sony refused and it's supposed it's supposed to be tom holland is the one that's born because in 2003 that would make sense oh which is so stupid well yeah (laughs) ah but tom holland being birthed by uh emma roberts wow (laughs) oh my gosh that this reminds me the part when she goes and meets that man in the forest and he explains to her yes we spider people have superhuman strength and we can sort of crawl on the walls and then in the trees. You didn't get any of those powers. <laughs> yeah, not you though. <laughs> you specifically only got premonition. Like what? Right? What? Like also, also just give why, her those powers. Why yeah. do they speak English? Mm. Why also, do the spider people speak English? I also love that like when we see them in two th- the when we see them in the flashback to her mom. They have these like 
those costumes were so fucking dumb that we're trying to look like Spider-Man's costumes where their skin is painted red and they have netting yeah. that looks like Spider-Man's web. But then when she goes, it's just like some dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really loved that the movie started with those red people, like them covered in red and in black vines. And I was just like, oh, we're in this movie. Like, there's no question what we're about to watch. A masterpiece. Um, but like... <laughs> The, the decision to do all, like there's so many decisions that go into filmmaking and like they all, like, oh, it's beautiful. Also, how did the spider people get this Peruvian immigrant into the child protective services and foster care system in America? <laughs> like, did they ship her in a basket? Like, did someone be like, I'll, I'll, I'll go to New York, I'll drop her But off. they also shipped her with her mom's research. Oh. Also, her mom was able to get uh, right. photos developed before she died <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> On the day, and she took that. photos the day she died. The day <laughs> she died. Yeah. I didn't and, even and think she, about that. Jesus Christ. She went to the Walgreens, got them developed, <laughs> and then um, put it in a basket in a suitcase. Okay. I want to talk about that end, though, where she ends up where... Oh, my God. It Did, was okay. so stupid. Please tell me about the, your theater viewing experience because mine was people like me that were like ready to laugh. And so we were laughing throughout the movie, but then there was people that were there with kids earnestly watching. Oh. And by the end of the movie, even those people with the kids were scream laughing <laughs> and crying like I was at this last five minutes of the movie. What was your, your audience like? Same. Yeah, same, same. I hilariously, uh, I saw it with uh, a friend of mine. I, I literally had to say, I will supply the weed and pay for the tickets if you come with me. And he was like, all right, I'll go. Um, and we were the only ones in the theater. And then a oh. mom and her daughter okay. sat one seat next to me. And I was like, what the fuck? Go away. But they were like really weird. And they had brought like a ton of their own food and were like burping. The one farted at one point during Ew. the movie. Um, so they did not laugh, but they were... I don't even know that they knew what they were watching. Um, but my friend and I were like hysterically laughing, making her into like a whatever Charles Xavier it was just so dumb. And like Well, the, the fucking crazy the fucking crazy part is she's blind. Like the actual <laughs> Madame Webb <laughs> right. is is like in a wheelchair because she's old as fuck. Right. Well, I think she's all she has like cause the neuro um disorder, like she's Madam Webb in the comics, from what I researched after, was born that way. Um, the, the way we find her at the end of the movie, basically. So they but retconned like, but, her origin but yeah, story. But she's yeah. like, like, according to the movie's logic, she's just <laughs> blind. Like right. She's not like fully on like a paraplegic person. Right. We did not address why she is suddenly in a wheelchair. Oh, I think it's because she fell, she fell? into that water and broke her... <laughs> Like this, do you remember? But that? I thought I thought she was just blind from the firework. Yeah, I I was a little bit like, wait a minute, why is she but, in a wheelchair too? Yeah, in the comic book, does she exist in a chair? Chair, in a yeah. Chair? In the comics, yeah. she is like a very very old lady who has a, a blindfold wrapped around her head and wears basically the costume you saw in the promo material that you only see for a second in the movie. That like, mm -hmm. well, give us that ageism. How dare they? <laughs> <laughs> She's also very cool with like these very giant life changes that have happened to her in the span of five minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, She's she like, very it's happy. okay. I have you, my girls. Yeah. And it's I've like, never what? seen more clear. What not that the line? It's so great. Fucking Christ. And the glasses were so stupid. The looking. glasses <laughs> were like what you wore to watch Captain EO at Disneyland in the late 80s. <laughs> yeah. And the chair was from like the Xavier mm -hmm. collection. Like at the early the movies <laughs> design within reach or something <laughs> and the way they sort of like yes just like <laughs> she spins around and there's no there's no movement and you're like is she trying not to laugh right now is she like just like oh my god i'm getting paid so much money to do this right now it was very like a ta-da moment <laughs> Yes. Like, Ta-da. <laughs> yeah, it was then, such a reveal for like nothing. <laughs> and then the window in the background is a spider web. Oh mm -hmm. my god. Um, also, also oh. she goes, the best thing about the future is that it hasn't happened yet. 
So true. <laughs> so sounds, true. Goodbye. That sounds like a big goodbye. Threat. <laughs> 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 Also, can we stop making movies about time travel? It doesn't work. It's boring I, well, in, in in comic book land. Well, there. I mean, in Dune too. Have I got a movie for you? Oh, about someone who sees the future. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I, do you, here's another question. Do you think she was the? Do you think that was the original ending of her sort of ending up as? the dr x of this this is dr oh my god xavier professor of this, x. <laughs> professor x i'm sorry oh my god i'm going to jail Ooh, she, nerd you know, jail uh did she did she know she was going to be the sort of professor x like she was like i'll agree to this one movie where i do a bunch of stuff and then in the spin-offs because we're clearly this movie is entirely made to set up these three girls as these as the spider gang um do you think she was like yeah cool i'll just get to you know sort of be their advisor and pop in and do a few scenes right that's probably not a bad gig right tom like do you think she knew that or wh what or do you think she signed on there was a script and then it ends with this and she was like i didn't want this <laughs> i don't i really don't know but i i, I imagine they pitched it as she'd be like the Nick Fury of these spider movies with Tom Holland, hopefully. I get like, you know, like so oh, there she is gets a... paid the same amount to to make the following movies with yeah. less, why not, less amount right? of work. Yeah. Yeah. I so this is an Alex, I don't know if you are familiar with this story. There's like I meant to look it up and I fucking forgot until right now. There is like a spider. There are two different Spider-Man comics. This is like very, very, very loosely based on. And one of them is like what introduces um, the one girl's name is Maddie. And it's like the comic that introduces her that I want to say was like late 90s, maybe early 2000s, where it's like there's a, a female Dr. Octopus. She's got like a purple, a uh, green bikini and big white hair. Mm. And there's Madam Web and all the spider ladies like coming together and they're all being attacked. And it's who's going to be the next spider woman. Um, and then there's another story with that villain from this movie that I am not familiar with where he doesn't even wear that outfit. He wears a suit and is barefoot. That's like his whole super villain <laughs> costume. But they made it a spider costume because they needed someone to look like Spider-Man, I guess. Um and yeah, like, it's like, I know there was parts of it where I'm like, I, oh, I, yeah, that was a cool story that we had in the comics, but mm, this doesn't translate. Um, and in the comics, all of the other spider women are established. Like, it's like Julia Carpenter, Jessica Drew, and Maddie Franklin are like the, and Madam Web. And yeah, I, they all have powers in that story. Oh. That is the thing. And so I want us to quickly talk about the girls um but by the way when i it was like three quarters of the movie when they were like said her name out loud i'm like wait her last name is web <laughs> her last name is web i didn't know it was all going to be so <laughs> on the nose well her first name is charlotte <laughs> yes well, charlotte is miranda the whole thing about Cassandra and seeing stuff into the future. So it's really on the nose. So on the nose. Scream 2 reference. I get what you're Right, down. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom, uh, Alex, would you? <laughs> I'm like, Cassandra, the woman who plays Elvira, that's where my brain went. Explain <laughs> it. What is Cassandra? Why is that? Oh, it's Greek myth. Yeah. She's, oh. she, she sees the future and no one oh. believes her. Oh, that's fun. And See, then they fucking fine. kill her, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think they do. <laughs> they probably um, kill her. So I, the name I thought you were going to mention is, so Sydney Sweeney's character is named Julia Cornwall, which sounds like a porn <laughs> name. Like, that sounds like it means something. Like, I'm like, well, is that when you do the blah, 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 and you punch them in the head and you put it in their butt? Like, that, it sounds like one of those stupid things from like- Like a we rusty kids. trombone. Yeah, like, that's what that sounds a like. Julia, ooh, and gave I, me a Julia Cornwall. Right, right. Doesn't that kind of sound like it could be that? And I don't you know why they, her name in the, the comic. Yeah, what is that? What um what sexual activity would a Julia Cornwall be? <laughs> Some, it would have to be gay, right? A Julia Cornwall, I don't know. You're like 
you're doing a crying panda while Julia Child is on in the background. Too dark? Sure, sure. Okay. But <laughs> so you, three other girls, and Zosha Mamet with computers. <laughs> <laughs> Not using our powers because we don't have them yet. <laughs> I don't know why they changed her name from Julia Carpenter because Julia Cornwall is objectively a stupider name. I mean, I like, I enjoy this move. I, I'm, pro, I'm pro Julia Cornwall. But so that name sounds like a poor name just in general. And it felt like her whole vibe was a 35 year old cast to play a uh, like not, not legal teen in a porn. Like uh, she was like shy, I mean, but then no, she I mean, had the like her knee high socks and her Britney Spears skirt. And it's like, what the yes. fuck is this? Kind I of mean, to be fair, I feel like they really just were like, don't look at Sydney Sweeney's boobs in this. <laughs> they were like, like Sydney Sweeney, a, an actress famously known for being like a bombshell. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where and like, just like oozing char like charisma and being like the hottest girl actress of the moment. They're just like, oh, no, 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 no. Here, here's a jacket with a shirt with another shirt and the jacket <laughs> this girl's 12 but then her skirts were so short yes and also I could not tell how old they were supposed to be like it was like nondescript teen no idea minors they're Can't really see. like I feel like that's all the script said like yeah <laughs> teenagers. whatever age doesn't matter um the other two I, so full disclosure I have only seen Sydney Sweeney in this and anyone but you. Mm. I have not watched Euphoria. And, and so Lotus. now I am wondering. Wasn't is... she a White Lotus season? She's one? in season oh, one right. of White Lotus. Okay. Yeah. I have seen her in White Lotus. She was good in that. Um, but now two out of three have been pretty horrendous. And she has the delivery of Dakota Johnson in both these movies that I've seen of hers. Is she a bad actor or is these are these <laughs> two bad movies that I've seen her in? Because like anyone but you, her and Glenn Powell had the opposite of chemistry. It was a cute movie. Glenn Powell was very charming. It seemed like Sydney Sweeney, the actor, fucking hated Glenn Powell, the actor, so she could not pretend to like him on screen. I haven't seen this. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard Is for me to say because I haven't really seen her in much either. I've only seen the Euphoria clips on Twitter yeah, same, after yeah. they aired the the day after. Um. I don't know. I always think though there's something about like direction and studio notes and editing and sort of all of that that kind of sometimes I think a movie like this where the there's fingerprints all over it. Yeah. I think every performer gets a pass, unfortunately. That's fair. That's like fair. I'm like I'm like nobody on set knew what they were supposed to be doing they were just trying to get through the day and like no one knew what go home and like yeah obviously do the best they could do but also like look at this script i mean like come on they're like five-year-olds are gonna watch this who care you know i don't think that's a great objective to have but do you know what i'm saying where it's like yeah i don't think it's fair to be like oh she's bad in this because it's like well everybody's collectively bad like i've worked with adam scott and so like uh, and he's a great actor and i i kept looking at him on screen and i'm like why are you in this movie, sir? And then I was like, because he's Uncle Ben. Like there were things I think promised to right. everybody that were like, taken. If this over. does well, you'll be you'll have yeah. a big fat paycheck and get ten new Hamptons homes instead of just like one. I was promised a brand new franchise with Spider Women, and it was taken away from me by this movie. So, but I at least got this one. So that's okay. I think I think there's it's not necessarily bad acting that we're seeing. It's 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 good actors that are being. That are being sort of held captive in this yes. world mm -hmm. uh where also i'm very curious the director in one of the the clips where she's with dakota and they're being interviewed says sort of brags about this movie has more cuts than any other film ever made or something <laughs> like i don't know 2000 <laughs> something and i don't know if that's a thing to to brag about it means that there was like it's also like it's bad for our brains like it's playing into the like uh attention span thing with that many cuts and i think that means that there was the way uh I i'm i'm not sure i trust that the way it it was being filmed and that's fair actors yeah we're being treated i did not seem like any of the actors were taken care of in that department no definitely not did you all see that interview with sydney sweeney and the other two actors whose names are Celeste O'Connor and Isabella 
I don't know what her last name is. Um, Rosalini. No. Um, Isabella Mercad. Merce. Oh God, I'm going to butcher that. Um, anyway, the three of them are saying they have a group chat with Dakota Johnson and Dakota Johnson just has never replied in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> that makes complete sense. <laughs> they really, that really does make sense, but they're like giggling and laughing. They're clearly excited to promote this movie and they're like, oh yeah, she never replies in the group chat. <laughs> also, I kind of feel like Sydney Sweeney is the same thing as Dakota Johnson is like, no one's casting them because they're chameleons. You're casting them yeah, because like- vibe. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But I also feel like that even what that that wasn't even the case with Sydney Sweeney here, who is playing several years younger than she's than she is. Yeah, it was odd choices all around for her. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it's also like she looks the part of the Spider Woman. Right. Spider-Woman. She looks great. She yeah. looks great in that in that three minute scene that will yeah, but, haunt um, me forever. No, but I I will say that. I kind I don't know. I really love Sydney Sweeney. I think the same way I love Dakota Johnson. Mm. And I think and I actually do think that I have to disagree with like anyone but you. I think that there's mm. a lot of chemistry there, but I don't think anything was written. And so a lot of it is like propelled by their chemistry. Hmm. See, I thought the movie was showing, not telling us that they had chemistry and that there was none. Um, but oh, there's so when when she's when she's making fun of how Glenn Powell swims, that was just, that was the only it, it part was that a I found. little bit. There's just like there's just something there, and you're just I, like oh, I also I learned the term um, hot girl fit. I didn't. I never heard of that term before, but now I like it. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm striving for. Um, hot girl fit. Hot girl fit. Also, it's just I. It's so weird that every promotional piece, everything we saw was the like 30 seconds of them as spider women, like that feels like a a reveal, right? If we're not going to do that in the movie, like save that for like us to see it as like a cool reveal, not like we think this is what the movie will be and it is not that movie. Um, Right. But what if you wanted to see more of Dakota Johnson driving an ambulance? (laughs) (laughs) I mean... I, I would. Did you, get, see the, did you see the interview where she was just like, I think I might win an Oscar for stunt driving if there was ever an Oscar for stunt driving. Oh God, the, the clip of her on Graham Norton is very fun. Uh, <laughs> She's so good. Doing, and they show her stunt her stunt drive where she yeah. like does it. But then I try to remember in the movie, where was that? <laughs> did she do it with the ambulance at some point? Where was that stunt? <laughs> Wait, did she really do the stunt driving? There is a, apparently she had to land on this mark and like swerve and. <laughs> I think it was the. I think it's the cab. I think she does it with the cab. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, obviously I'm <laughs> renting this movie as soon as it's available. So when the movie comes out on streaming, we will do a stoned live watch together. Ooh. <laughs> God. Um, I I just like the. Tom, you have been in a uh, big budget blockbuster franchise. Don't make it about me. Don't make it about me. <laughs> you played what? Thor in Avengers Endgame. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, is that like, I don't know. Is it like, is that kind of like the par for the course? Like people don't really know what movie like, it's kind of like you'll see when it gets released as to what it would will be with movies like that. What was I in that was a big... Huh. I know this. I do. The Transformers. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, right. Mm. <laughs> I think that one specifically, they, uh, it, there was, most departments were not given a script. The anger trickled down directly from the top. He, that director was screaming and yelling and picking on the Australian woman that I was with and, I just, <laughs> I've told you the story, right? Yeah, you told story. me the story. Yeah. <laughs> data, 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 data. He just was screaming at her over her pronunciation of data. Um, so oh. I, I think no one, I think while you're making them, there is no, you have no, I think in any movie in general, like, I don't know what this will be. Is this terrible? Is it good? It's sort of the reveal is in the, I think in the editing of, of what, what exactly you got. Like the only thing you know for sure is like, does, does it look nice? Mm, that's fair. Um, so I don't know. What was your question? Uh, do you, 
to you answered it i was i was wondering if like they knew the what kind of movie they were in but i guess if there's like a zillion script changes and they're just kind of like mm. yeah i think specifically with, since that was like they're the first of that right. franchise i think everyone's like oh this will either be like slick and cool looking or we're making a toy commercial and we don't know what the cgi is gonna look so mm -hmm. yeah i think there is a big gamble in what is this that's fair yeah um all right well i guess we're at the end um favorite line or scene and then grade um Alex, I'll have you go first. Oh, oh, no, don't make me go first. I can't remember the best line. I feel like you you're the- You saw it twice. <laughs> you saw it twice. Yeah, you saw it twice. I think you're I more said prepared. All, I, I think I said, I think the best line is, the best part of the future is that it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> or when she goes, how would you know if you could climb on a, up a wall if you've never tried climbing up a wall? I was she charmed so by her wise. trying. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, a I also... plus. A plus. A plus. Fair. Fair. <laughs> Tom, it looked like you had a... One of them came to me, which okay. was when she monologued to the cat in order for us, yeah. the audience, to be able to <laughs> know what she was thinking. And it was... It just... <laughs> it's on another level of filmmaking. <laughs> And then, but my actual favorite is when she spun around in the glasses. That just, I, yeah. I could not stop laughing. <laughs> what grade would you give it, Tom? <laughs> this movie? Um, an A for enjoyment, a C for... Uh, Everything else. For, for, the, for the craft work of it. I think C is more than fair for that aspect um mike give me your chaotic favorite po moment and grade um my favorite chaotic moment is actually something we didn't discuss which is her flashback with her mother um when she screams at that woman's face why don't you love me um i thought that was ex ex extremely funny um it made I, no sense <laughs> i but i i howled in the theater Wait, when screams, she why did don't that you love me who she like that? she uh dakota johnson screams her at mom. her mother she's like her but ghost it's a, mom yeah it's a flashback, flashback but then whatever. they interact like, why didn't you love me remember because she's like she's so mad at her mom the entire movie until she learns like she her gave mom. her up for adoption because she was murdered or what a <laughs> it's because her mom the, the like whatever issue her but mom the went to the Amazon were to worth it, mom. That's yeah. another one. That's another and, one. And like her mom cured whatever disease she had. Just she's right. like, oh, I don't have that. That's um, right. The, the yeah. plot of the film. Um, yeah. but uh, then remember when like she her mom in the beginning is like, Oh, she's kicking. She doesn't want me here. Yes. And then you're like, oh. <laughs> Wow. Right, that, that, yeah. She didn't want her there. She had the sight. Um, <laughs> but I but I do think the best line is, um, but I don't have a neuromuscular condition um oh that that's great uh and then favorite scene well i think i already said it but the whole that whole that whole thing was uh great with the three spider girls yeah. Yeah. okay wait so she d wait one final thought she doesn't have power like physical powers other than the, the premonition but then at the end she becomes a, a ghost who splits into three they sure do not explain oh, that yeah. do they? so can Which she was she physically doing things with her ghosts Spirit body, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she's totally leaves herself open for the villain to come and just punch her physical form. So <laughs> that made no sense. And then, like, isn't that what the voiceover of that scene is? Your web connects them all, and it's like this doesn't make sense. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? And she just projects, but like can interact, and yeah. Uh, but so I give it an A plus, but also um, afterwards, uh, the the tagline, her web connects them all, reminded me, I grew up Catholic, and it reminded me of in the service when they say, peace be with you, and then the church goes, and also with you. So now my friends and I have been saying, her web connects us all, and I say, and also with you. So that's, that's uh, Madam Webb has left an impression on me. Beautiful, and I hope beautiful. it's left an impression on all of you. Uh <laughs> I, my favorite scene is when the villain is talking to Zosha Mehmet and nothing he says lines up with the way his mouth is moving. Like I could not, I was so stoned and I could not stop laughing. That was like the hardest I laughed. It was so bad, so stupid. Wait, 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 
Zosha Mamet is really cool, was like on board with killing teenagers once he convinces her that they won't be teenagers anymore. Yeah. <laughs> teenagers grow up. Like, fucking what? <laughs> I, the dialogue was written by an eight-year-old. They <laughs> won't be teenagers forever. <laughs> like, I, I give the movie definitely I, B plus, if not A, for fun. Um, But yeah, if it, we're grading on like writing style yeah. technique then i think i give it like a big fat f but it's i do think it's like oops we made a movie that's fun it's not like a definitely didn't set out to be what the way it was received and the way we all received it but the fact that the four of us can be like well we did have fun kind of says something right like i am praying for this movie that it becomes a showgirls or yes a, yes um yes uh that is not rocky horror because that's People genuinely enjoy that, but we're right. you know where there's midnight screenings and people, cats. I, I, yes, like can there be? I hope that this it gains a cult following that is able to ironically enjoy. Like I would like to see a drag number somehow set to like the theme of this. <laughs> like maybe a drag a whole drag brunch that's Madam Web theme. I would go to that. Yeah, you should host it, Ian. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Slayerfest 98 presents Madam Web Drag Night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it'll be like Morbius's re-release where nobody shows up. I'll say it, Mike, you might be the only person I would have to beg Alex <laughs> to come, even if it was like down the street. <laughs> yeah, I'll fly I would go for country. Madam Web. I would go for Madam Web. <laughs> oh my god, has any has the has a drag queen done a Madam Web? I haven't seen, have we any. seen it yet. Like but it would make sense. The glasses right? and the chair. But it wouldn't be that dynamic of a performance because she's just spinning around in a chair. Well, right? but exactly. I think that's what would be funny about it. But it's I think like she sad. it could be like a drag number where it starts with a song where she's like somber and smiling in her glasses and chair. And then she <gasps> takes off the thing and reveals the really awful co red costume we see in like a flash. What if there's like an that? emo ballad version of No Doubt Spider Webs that oh she's lip syncing Oh my God. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. And then when You're she does the reveal, right. it goes into the actual fast song. And Ooh, yeah, get Brett White to do this. <laughs> the, the problem is that not, not enough people will have seen it. So yeah, be that's the problem. Yeah. There would the be like four, five gays in the audience, like, yeah. There are the four gays who've seen this movie. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> everyone else and the would be like, who wrote it. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well. Thank, all of, thank you to all of you for seeing this movie and the three of you for convincing me to see this movie so we could do this. I can't. I just can't believe you weren't going to see it. Yeah. It's so good. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't see any of the Sony movies because they're always bad. Exactly. <sighs> That's the whole thing. When, when my friend sent me the article that said, Madam Web isn't bad, it's it's worse than you think. And then my I was like, oh, so we're going to see this. <laughs> I was gonna say, was it Alex's article? But Alex, yours was that it is fun, right? Like, well, I just think the whole thing is just like you can be your movie can be very stupid, mm -hmm. but also very fun, mm -hmm. and you can have very like non stupid movies that aren't very fun. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So what do we like? Why are we? Why do we put a comic book movie under such scrutiny? Like it is what yeah. it is. Especially this one. Like even exactly. looking at it, does it like it? If it was the spider women in their costumes, it would have been like, okay. I don't think it would have been like groundbreaking, but yeah, I don't know. Well, you know that Dakota Jones was probably like, why do you guys even like that movie? Yes, I'm sure she would be annoyed <laughs> listening to this being like, what do they like? Ew, why yeah. are they laughing? Like, what do they like about it? <laughs> she scares the shit out of me. I love her so much. Oh my God, I... she would have bullied me in high school so bad. Yeah, yes. and it would have been great. It would have been well, awesome. Well, that's, that's my favorite part of her lore is that Riley Keough in Vanity Fair has this like story about like how like she and Dakota Johnson were best friends in high school. And it's just like, could you imagine going to high school with those girls and those are the mean girls? Elvis's granddaughter and Dakota Johnson. They would have like the one gay that is like their, their gay and then every other gay would be bullied to shit. Oh, see, I think it's not even that. I think they're too cool for the gays. Like they oh, wouldn't really? even have like a gay guy. They're like, I feel like they would have like the one, but like, no, oh, one. no. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for listening. Uh, go see this movie. Wait, wait, it's can fucking I ask you ridiculous. one last question? Yeah, sure. If you're Madam Webb, who are we? <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Um, Tom, I think you're Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> Thank you. He doesn't know the other two's names. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Mike, you would be um no, it's yeah, I have it right here. You would be Isabella and Alex, you would be Celeste because Celeste but, Celeste is the rich snobby girl, and that's your vibe, Alex. Perfect. So wait, am I the one that gets the spider legs eventually? I don't fucking remember. No. Okay. All right. Well, no, you have the gadgets because you're smart. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sure. I have I have the legs, and right. then Sydney Sweeney has a laser beam. Uh, well, yeah, if yeah. I'm smart, that's going to be a stretch for me. <laughs> um, but <laughs> all right, everyone. I will talk to you all later. Bye. 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 Bye.